to stop sharing my screen. And so, hello, I'm Erin Becker. I am the director of the Cambridge Art Association. And I want to thank you for joining us on CAA Day, our day of fund and friend raising at the Cambridge Art Association. I'm so pleased to kick off today with a studio visit with Mary Louie. Uh, Mary is an artist based in Quincy, Massachusetts, and is also a member of the CAA's board of directors. And so I'm gonna hand things over to Mary and put her in the spotlight. Oh, I don't wanna be on there though. <laughs> Hi everyone. Am I, is it go time? <laughs> Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for joining from uh, wherever you are, near and far. I see friends and family and many friends through Cambridge Art Association. Uh, my name is Mary Louie. I am, as Erin mentioned, a board member on Cambridge Art and I also am an artist, an artist member. So I started my uh, like adult interest in art as a photographer and then you know, as uh, mostly on film and then as technology, digital technology advanced and cameras were on everyone's phones, I started wanting to like make my own images and that led me to working on collage. So I think the biggest uh, overall um, sort of influence in my work is um, environmentalism and taking things that uh, would otherwise be thrown away and turning them into art. And every year that I develop my collage style, it adds more elements, paint, vinyl game pieces, glitter glue, styrofoam, wood, blocks, um, anything that I pick up now and have an idea for it, it's beginning to go into my work. So today we're going to take a look at my workspace. And like Aaron said, if you have any questions, put them in the chat. I'm happy to answer any that you may have. Um, I will start by flipping my camera so that you can see the wall right in front of where I do most of my work. Um, I have some fun cyanotypes that I made with my nieces this summer. I have uh, notes that I've kept from workshops that I take at CAA. This one was about writing your artist statement. I like to hold on to these things because it reminds me that I can do this work and I have the, the proof and I have uh, evidence to go back to to get inspired. Um, you'll also see lots of postcards and pictures of family. So I think my niece Juliana colored this little cat here. Um, there's a picture of my mom graduating, me and Andy at Niagara Falls. Andrew is my husband. I think he's joining with my daughter and my mother-in-law, Sandra. Hi, everyone. So I like to uh, think of this kind of as like my playroom where I'm allowed to make a mess and leave it that way until I can come back to it. Um, this is kind of my corner where I do a lot of experimenting. So you'll see a lot of little cutouts of magazines, some works in progress, um, works that are finished. I think this image here, or this collage here was in the promo that Aaron and Rebecca and Candace put together. This is more recent work. And uh, I've begun to think of this circular work as like a portal and I'm excited to make more of these. Um, there's some smaller stuff here that I have in the works. Now that I'm a mom to an awesome baby girl named Veronica, uh, motherhood I think has also entered into my practice. I think about it a lot. Um, I think it relates to environmentalism in a lot of ways. It's all about caretaking um, of planet and of fellow humans. Um, this is the cabinet where I keep a lot of my materials. I have pieces ready to go in these drawers. I used to organize by size and now I organize by color. Um, there's some crap under here. <laughs> and what else can I show you? These are some pieces I just started playing around with, putting like a 
white paint on. I just, I usually just play around in the beginning and then let everything kind of come together. Um, these very colorful ones are new. This is actually a piece of styrofoam, um, probably one of my most hated materials as a nature loving person, but I thought, well, what'll happen if I paint onto it? And it seems to be working so far uh, and it, maybe it'll last forever. It'll probably outlast the paint and the paper that I put on it. <laughs> Um, there's some little guys here. I took a roll of empty scotch tape and started playing around with that. Um, I think right now my time is in the studio is shorter than usual because of, um, you know, taking care of my daughter. But when I do have a minute, I like to just try whatever idea is currently in my head. And here's one of them now. This is a random sculpture that I started making. I threaded all these packing peanuts and then I didn't know what to do with them and I found this stick in our yard. And then these are the tubes from my breast pump. I just started putting some things together um, and, and seeing what would happen. So uh, another new idea, we'll see where it goes, but I think it has potential to be a very cool, um, ethereal installation one day. Um, this part of the studio is what I call my library. I have a lot of books and magazines. I get them mostly from thrift stores. However, I will shout out Avi Paul Weinstein's father in Western Mass, who um, gave me all of these National Geographics, but I also have Life, I have Look, I have House Beautiful, I have Vogue, I have old progressive architecture, and then I also have a lot of books. Um, so a lot of this is like nature, architecture, art, interior design, um, and then anything that I find kind of like funny or amusing. I think I have a book about I don't know. Anyway, there's lots of books about lots of different things. Um, and I just tend to hold on to them uh, to see what gets inspired. I'm now a little bit more deliberate about the what I pick up at thrift stores. One, because I have so much, but I also want to branch out in terms of um, images that end up in my work. So this here is a print on newsprint that. Um, Zone 3 and Alston put together a couple years ago, I think. You can get their newspapers in Alston. Um, and they've been doing this great program where they feature local artists and you put a quarter in and then you basically get like an awesome, somewhat original, original in that it's not commercially produced. But um, you get these cool, uh, affordable posters that you can decorate your house with. Um, so this corner over here is kind of storage, I guess. I have a flat file where I keep other materials, work in progress, and then works that are finished. They're either framed or don't need to be framed or they're in portfolios. Uh, I actually have quite a lot of work. I realized filling all the drawers recently. Um, if we zoom in, you can see one of my most fun works to date. It's a dollhouse that actually my nieces played with a couple Christmases ago. I painted it for them because I didn't have any toys at the time. And then I had so much fun playing with it that I just kept going. So it has the orange roof and then there's some pretty funky rooms inside. There's even, you know, a pair of identical <laughs> rugs here. Um, some other framed work that I have yet to hang up. There's another portal here, two framed works on paper. And then uh, I think I mentioned before, I have been branching out into other shapes and materials. So these are um, like wood petals, I guess. My favorite uh, picker on Instagram, barn digger. She found these in a wood shop somewhere and I just loved them. I thought they were a lot smaller and I bought 25 of them. So those will be something one day. Um, I have other 
small bits that I've been working on as I have time. Here's a little bit of a larger work on paper. Um, here's my Star Wars walkie talkies. <laughs> and then I mentioned environmentalism and sustainability before. Uh, I'm very, I became a couple of years ago very conscious of the waste that is generated from not only my art practice, but my everyday life. And one of the things I started doing, at least in the studio, is saving the scraps from my collage collage cutouts and turning them into paper, which has handmade paper, which has been a really fun and rewarding practice. I'm not going to make any paper right now. Maybe I will one day if people are interested. But this is kind of the setup. Um, you pour water in here. This is the frame, the decal that you know, filters the pulp from the rest of the water. I make the pulp with paper and this ninja. I have the instructions in case I forget how to do it. And the first time I did this, I realized I was wasting more paper towels cleaning up the water than I was actually making and saving paper. So I switched to a method where I have all reusable cloths and materials to wipe up with. Um, and then here's some kind of finished pieces or finished dry paper. These I made out of all of our junk mail. I shredded all of it and turned it into paper. Um, here's kind of an idea of painting on the paper and threading it together. This one I just really like. I like the way it got all muddled and turned out. And then this is an exploration um, taking images from one book, cutting them out, using the scraps to make the background, and then putting it all back together again. So this is a book that's called All About the Weather. I have a few options here. I made these for my husband's band. Um, they're called the Chrome Bouquet, if anyone wants to check them out. Here's another option. And then this is another sort of new work in progress. I don't really know what it is yet. I think I was, I wanted to try using the handmade paper in some way on top of uh, like a wood canvas. And then, you know, just as I kept playing, I added glitter glue, I added paint splatters, I added washes of paint. Um, so this, this is really like a slow burner that I am having fun with, but I really don't know what it is yet. <laughs> um, and then in this corner, I have a kind of a tech setup. Usually there's a scanner here. So if something is small enough, that rather than photograph it, I will scan it. Um, it's just more storage and more places to put piles of stuff. Um, on this wall in general, I try to keep it pretty open because if I need to photograph something, it's great for that. I set up lights, I hang the image, and then I do my best to learn from Eric, who teaches the uh, photographing your work class through CAA. Um, I probably should take it again. <laughs> um, I don't know, more random fun stuff, postcards from friends and past shows, ideas. Um, postcards that I just think are so interesting that I never will cut up. This here I learned to make from Allison at one of CAA's workshops. It's a, she's going to kill me. I forgot the name of what this is, but it's like an accordion book pop up. The thing. Tunnel book. Yes. Thank you, Erin. Tunnel book. Um, and then this is the, this is the menu, the drink menu actually from my wedding. I made an original collage and then different parts of it became the save the date and the invitations and then the signage at the wedding. Um, I wanted to make cigar boxes, so I bought a bunch of them and then I've never really made one before, so we'll see what happens. And that's, we've kind of come full circle. So if anyone wants to see something up close, let me know. And if you have questions, let me know. I'll flip the camera down again. There we go. While we wait to hear from other folks, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit more about um, the impact that motherhood has had on your practice and 
if there are any specific pieces that reflect um, that the role that motherhood plays in your work right now. Yeah, definitely. So I was pregnant um, at the end of 2018. I gave birth in 2020. So I have a lovely pandemic baby who will actually, she's 14 months old today. So um, that's how long I know that we've been on lockdown. This is the, pretty much the age of my daughter. Um, so right before a lot of the work I was making was really about not knowing the future. Like I don't, I never had a baby before. I don't know what it's going to be like to become a mother. I don't know how my life will change. Um, I knew it was, it, it was exciting and I knew I would love her and that my husband would as well. Um, but it's just, you know, I'm anticipating this, this great common life adventure and not really knowing what, it, what, what would transpire. So. Um, the portals that I mentioned, sorry, I'm trying to flip the camera. There we go. Um, so the portals are really one of, oops, sorry, are one of the works that is included with that. Let's see if I can turn this light up and get it better. And there we go, I think that's better. Um, so I had a lot of fun making these. I poured a lot of those questions into this work. And um, I think maybe one of the most fun things about this making this was no side is up you can really it's a circle you know so any direction I feel like hanging it in is the right direction um and it you know is a completely different um path for me process wise um taking something round instead of square or rectangle and then the um I'll do a close up of the other one over here in the corner. Sorry that it's a little dark. But this work here was part of that exploration to the mobile, the dollhouse. And then this is the other uh, round work. This one was in a mem member prize show with, uh, with Ben Sloat, juried by Ben Sloat. And then these. See if I can get close to these. These two collages were part of that as well. And everything was in uh, a small experimental project space at Trustman Gallery at Simmons University. And it was such a nice, wonderful time. Simmons is great. Uh, Helen who works there is great. And I also got to show next door to my friend and fellow board member, and amazing artist, Cicely Carew, who I think is here today too. <laughs> and Mary, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, sure. Uh, and I am also actually really interested in hearing a little bit more about your process of um, collage yeah. and whether you've changed it up in terms of, um, in terms of like the image transfer, are you, actually using the source material. Uh, we have a question from Allison that is uh, kind of points to this. Is it nerve wracking to start cutting something out rather than keeping the source material intact? No, uh, well, um, so I do you I'll start with Candace's question first. I do use the original source material. I think part of that is just realizing there's so much out there. And I, I really started collage because I had been keeping these magazines for a long time. I used to work at an architecture firm that was over 60 years old and they had all the magazines from like the 70s, 60s, some even maybe in the 50s and when they decided to pare down they let the employees take them. So I grabbed all these magazines thinking like oh they're so valuable I have to keep these and I moved with them several times and I just held on to them. It's not like I was reading the articles, I just thought they were cool. And finally, one day I was like, you know, I, I need to just try this out. I, I have this idea in my head that I can make collage and that I can have fun with it. So yeah, I don't, I don't really feel bad. If I do feel bad, I usually keep the book. I found this like lovely book of children's stories from the sixties. And I thought the pictures were so charming that I decided I probably won't cut it up because I just, I think they're really nice. And I don't see what I can add basically. Um, and are you using like an exacto knife? It, I mean, you're very precise in all of your 
cutting I'm curious to yeah I do I have a couple uh some straightforward some ergonomic I've tried the regular blades I've tried the ones that are supposed to last longer I don't know if there really is a difference um if exacto is listening then I will say there's a difference <laughs> um I'm available for exacto knife sponsorship <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever met anyone with an exacto knife sponsorship, but I will let you know if I do. Uh, we have another question from Loretta that she says, I saw a call her name on your wall. I'm not sure what, um, does any of your art relate to the goddess? To though, I'm sorry, what? To the goddess? Oh, um, so actually, I think what you saw is a protest sign that I made uh, last year at an event in my community. So I like I liked it. I hung it up. Um, Loretta, I hope, uh, feel free to I, unmute yourself if I'm not doing your question justice, but um, let's see. We have what other questions we have. I'm not really familiar um, with any goddesses enough to make work about them, but Loretta, maybe we can talk mm -hmm. more and that will find its way <laughs> into the work. Well, there was, is a course called Call Her Name. I guess I, I, if you have a slightly different Say Her Name, and I didn't catch that. And it's about um, looking at the goddesses. There's another course like it too, but this is the second one is called call her name and call, um, you know, and you actually call the name and it, you do study the different goddesses, but it, it's more in, in terms of studying different strengths of women in by doing that kind of historical research. Oh, that sounds really interesting. I would love to learn more. Yeah. Um, so another question from Diane. Do you always work in gold, orange, brown, or gray um, color palette? Um, it seems like you do. You. I think I'm all over. For, <laughs> for using that that color palette a little bit. Yeah, recently I have been. Hi, Diane. I have one of her paintings. She's awesome. If it's Diane Nelson, which I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am all over the map. I kind of just use what I have. And a lot of the paint I use isn't even acrylic, it's like house paint. Um, so I'll take little sample pots and just kind of play around with them. Um, I, I don't think I have a color consistency. I think it's whatever fits at the moment. I, I finished some Boonbill based works that are all pink and white and, and like, purple and then I'll switch to the crazy bright you know teal purple yellow and then orange and blue or it comes and goes I and then I recently made some stuff that's just like mostly white and yellow hmm. um, yeah it'd be interesting to think about in terms of your source material how much inspiration you get from in terms of your color palette as well from from that um, rather than yes. just That's the, a great the point. images itself. I, I think I do. I think ever since organizing the materials by color, I, I'm not going to claim to be a painter, but I sort of imagine that's what a painter might do is like figure out what the palette is. And I, I do let the images kind of come together. And I mean, I might decide I want to make something red or blue or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, I will look at the, the, the way that the image colors are coming together and let that own. Um, kind of along the lines of this, would you say typically a lot of your source material is from like kind of vintage? I see a lot of like vintage images and I'm wondering with, in terms of the color palette if that uh, helps inform that. Yeah, it does for sure. I used to use more modern, well I used to use a mix of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think now magazines especially are printed. I don't, I've actually never used new books. I don't think it has the right feel uh, for, for me. And then magazines, the paper can be harder to work with. It tends to be like a little bit more thin and probably a higher recycled content than in the past, which is fine, that's great. So at some point I decided I need to just stop at like 
1990. So now I usually try to <laughs> use things that are from before then. Hmm. It also has a nicer feel. Like sometimes it has like a more matte finish. It it takes the glue easier. Um, I just like working with it better. Yeah. Um, so this question is from Cicely. Uh, she said, as a mother herself, uh, she's wondering if you feel a sense of urgency to your process. Urgency. Uh, I, oh, Cicely, in what way? I, I think I have an answer, but I would love to hear you elaborate. Yeah. Um, the question just came to me and then I was like, that could mean so many different things, honestly. Um, I think as I'm listening to you, I'm, I'm multitasking and wishing that I could be in my studio right now. And in the studio, there's like a sense of urgency I need to make and knowing that time is of essence. Um, and when you're with baby and she's crying, or, you know, you know that it's time to move on to the next task. Um, how might that affect your thinking and your questions and your practice? Um, it's kind of like an all of the above question. So probably just disregard everything I said. I wanna know about you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, I do feel, I think I feel a sense of urgency all the time. <laughs> um, I love my daughter, Veronica, she's so sweet and we, you know, every moment with her, I, it's never like, oh, I wish I was doing something else instead of being with her. But I do think about, oh, I have this idea. I don't want to lose it. Or I, um, I'll be like, oh, okay, it's nap time. I have 45 minutes. And then when I get down here, I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What, what's happening? Um, so a lot of, I think if anything, I, yeah, I feel the urgency all the time. And paired with that is something that I think maybe many artists feel which is we've just spent the last year plus kind of in a, in a holding pattern um, oh. um, <laughs> of just not really knowing what is going to happen next and I, I, I think I, I feel that pretty intensely um, you know I don't know if I it, like if a big show opportunity came my way like could I do it I think I could but you know, it would be later nights. It would be fitting studio time into these in-betweens. And I, I think that's probably just part of motherhood. Um, I'm interested, I'm actually, to piggyback on uh, Cicely's question, the, the concept of, of collage kind of has this um, put together, you know, constructed energy to it. And I'm wondering that if that like that multitasking sensibility that you have as a mother is kind of like transferring <laughs> into into your work, because I there's definitely like an energy to um, uh, to your work specifically, but I think like to the process of collage as well. Um, I yeah, I think um, once I'm in the studio, I tend to make decisions pretty quickly, uh, and maybe that was I think that was always there. You know, if I'm, I just get into it, you know, I just like, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? And collage can be very forgiving because if I don't like something, I'll just cover it up with something else, whether that's paint or more paper or what have you. Um, I think there are these longer periods between being able to work on something. So even if it's like small, you know, I might add a little bit to it, but I might not be able to go back to it for a few weeks or even months. Um, and I think that does, I think that changes, like, I think it's made me more, I don't know, like, I, even with things like these, like, little guys that I have there, yeah, I'll try to hold one up. Like, there's recognizable imagery, but it's a little bit abstract, and I kind of like, I kind of like that. It's not uh, trying to be... I don't know. It's not trying to be a scene necessarily. I'm just trying to, mm -hmm. I don't know, let it be. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Would you say that your works are kind of veering towards more abstraction or I, I mean, I know that you're kind of getting into the 3D realm. We did have some questions about uh, the dollhouse, which seems really 
wonderful. Um, let me see what I wanted to make sure that I got to everyone's questions. Um, yeah, if you, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about the dollhouse and yeah. um, and working in a 3D way that it seems like even with your 2D works, you're, you've been interested in kind of like going around the corners and um, kind of slowly getting into a 3D realm there. Yeah, especially with like the wood blocks or, you know, anything that is not paper, I do, I like to wrap it. I think it looks cool. I think it keeps the piece going. Yeah. It makes people like curious. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Oh, and one last question. And this is, again, I think everyone's very interested about your process of collaging. Um, do you spray any protective agent on the paper and how do you finish up your work? Yeah, I do. Um, I have used a spray before. I've switched to um, liquid lately. If anyone has any tips for me, I'm open to them. Um, I think that I like the coverage of liquid better, but I also worry about air bubbles. Um, but yeah, I do any any finished work that I show, I, I cover in some kind of archival varnish. Do you have any specific varnish? I'm curious to, that you work uh, with. Um, the spray, I use golden and then um, my, that mother gave me some Liquitex, hmm. some matte and gloss. I kind of go to the one extreme or the other. I like high gloss or I like just flat matte. Hmm. Did anyone have a specific question about the dollhouse or did they just want to see it a little bit better? I think. Or both. <laughs> I guess the, the question, um, Natalia had a question that said, where did you get your ideas for decorating the dollhouse? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think probably just trying to have, I had some images cut out. Like I said before, I have like a lot of um, interior design images and, you know, you can find some pretty wild rooms and I had pieces cut out and saved. I'll try to just peek in, Let's see if this can be stable enough. So I had this like, you know, this bed set, pic picture cut out. Um, so I was like, that has to make it in. And then, you know, there's like a, there's like a grandma or somebody here on this very hip modern sofa. Um, so once I, I, you know, I added elements of home, which I'm always very curious about, like how, how people live, how they set up their spaces, what makes them feel at home, what gives them comfort, what gives them joy. I'm gonna flip the camera. I even like added this uh, oh. Happy New Year hat. Um, so it really just turned into kind of like a fun house in a way. Um, and with so many books about decorative arts and antiquities that I don't always use, I don't always use those images in my work. Uh, I, I, I like to mix it up. I, but they, they felt, <laughs> pun intended, they felt at home here. And then on the outside, I did like a lot of just really kind of wacky outdoor nature elements. And I think on their own, they're not wacky, but all together. Mm. And I'm completely okay with that because this was just about trying to have fun. And then, you know, maybe even, let's see, there's like a rabbit here. If I had more hands, I would pull it, pull it out further so you could see more. But I probably will even keep adding to this. Like if you notice, there's really no like paint elements on the inside. That's something I tend to do a lot of. I don't know that I would add them, but you know, I, I don't really see this as totally done. I think there's like more that could happen with it. Mary, do you have any intentions of doing more dollhouses? Oh, or I would love of? to. <laughs> they're great um, like, when I see them at estate sales though they're sometimes kind of expensive and this one I I don't like to spend a lot of money on the materials which is also I think helps with cutting up original source material because I don't have like any preciousness about it you know it's not like I spent 25 or 50 dollars on something and then I'm gonna 
mess it up. I like to be just kind of yeah. free with the process in that way. Hmm. Um, do we have one? Do we have time for one more question, Erin? Um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate, I know that we're going a little bit over. I appreciate everybody sticking with us. Um, yeah, I think one more question and then um, we'll do our wrap up. Sure. So last question from Natalia, how do you prioritize or choose a project when there's so many ideas to explore? Just oh, wow. <laughs> hard question for, it, for every <laughs> artist. Yeah. I guess I just, I pick whatever's calling to me in that moment. Um, I don't know that that makes me a very good prioritizer, but I think it helps me trust my instinct. All right, well, thank you so much, Mary. You're That's welcome, wonderful. thank you. I'm going to quickly, just so um, you can all make sure to follow Mary, I put these links in the chat, but go check out her website. Um, I know that she recently did some updates on there uh, and also give her a follow uh, on Instagram at Mary E. Louie. Um, to keep up to date with everything that she's working on. I also have to say, I do really love that, particularly with the dollhouse, you kind of bring together a lot of your other professional experience in working with architects and, and surface designers um, in the content mm -hmm. with the house. So that's really cool. Um, this was recorded. Uh, so if you did miss any part of it, it will be posted on YouTube, probably on Monday. Um, we'll make sure to tag Exacto Knife uh, with the hopes that maybe Mary can get a little sponsorship from the blade makers. Um, this event is part of our CAA day celebrations, uh, which we are hosting in place of our typical spring fundraiser. Uh, we're actually 63% of the way to our fundraising goal. Um, we have a couple more events today. We have a workshop with Martha Wakefield, a mini workshop session at two. And then we have a panel discussion called curating change that begins at 7 PM. Both of those things are free. Um, if you were not able to sign up for the workshop this afternoon, you can shoot us an email. Um, if Candace or Rebecca can drop the registration link for the workshop tonight into the chat or the, the panel discussion tonight into the chat, that would be really great. Uh, I don't know, Mary, if you have any pitch that you wanna make for supporting CAA, um, but we will put that in the chat as well. Yeah, I, I would just like to say as a member, artist member, a board member, I have, you know, CAA has been so wonderful to me, whether it's like professional development or meeting other artists or having opportunities to exhibit, you know, even every time I do a Cambridge Art Call for Art, I get excited because it's a new person that I haven't maybe even encountered before who will see my work and hopefully like it. And then, you know, through this past year, it's been a lifeline for me. Like, I don't know that I would have been able to go to many in-person exhibits. So to be able to log on and then and be in breakout rooms with people and get to know everyone a little bit better, um, I, I think it's just been so wonderful. And I'm, I'm excited about the future for CAA. I think we've learned a lot in the last year. And I think, you know, we'll take the best parts of what we learned from pandemic life and mix them with you know, what we were doing before uh, that, that I think was working so well. Um, if you're not a member, become a member. You can even be a friend member. You can take classes. You don't necessarily have to be an artist, although I think there is an artist in all of us. If you, you know, liked my show and you feel inspired, you know, please donate to CAA. I think there's you know, even if you're just liking us on Instagram or um, giving us a air high five the next time you see us, we just are appreciative of all the support and, um, and that's, I don't know, I could go on, I could keep talking forever, this could be a whole other <laughs> presentation, but um, I just appreciate everyone joining and CAA for having me. Well, thank you for hosting us, Mary. Thank you to the artists of all ages. Uh, we really represented the, the age spectrum today with our youngest attendees um, from your family. And so I'm, I'm so happy that you could join us and see Mary's space. And I hope in the fall, when we can all gather together, you'll check out her exhibit that she's curating with Helen Poppinchok called Now More Than Ever. Um, and we'll have more information about that very soon, but October at our Catherine Schultz Gallery. Uh, until then, I hope we see you this summer and have a great rest of your CAA day.